Facebook Live. Thank you all for checking in with us if you tuned in to our 1010XL channel. Joe C. from XL Primetime, my man, head coach Dave Campo, back and bigger and better than ever. It's the off-season, Coach. We're winners right now, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Kool-Aid rolling around here. Yeah. We can't be beaten. Yeah. We cannot be beaten. All right, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk to OTAs. Coach has got a lot of notes that he takes during practice. We're only allowed to see one OTA practice each week, which is a little different than what we have what, 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 it's a little different than what we've experienced in the past. And I think you might have pointed out a couple of reasons why. So we're going to get to that coming up. Okay. But we appreciate everybody tuning in. We know you're Jaguar fans. Uh, definitely let us know what you're thinking if you've got questions uh, on Facebook or wherever you watch uh, your podcast with Campo and Joe. So I think we should just start out, generally speaking, about the energy, the feel, the vibe, and then we'll start to drill down on position groups and then also the reason why they're not letting us in as often as they used to. What, what, what do you think about the overall vibe? Well, I, I really like the way they're practicing. I like, I can see the, I can see the added speed mm -hmm. uh, that they've brought to this ball club compared to two years ago. Yeah. Uh, they're a much faster football team. I think they... They have a confidence about themselves right now, which I think is important. Uh, you know, I think you can uh, you you get more with honey than you do. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what the other thing is, like but setting a trap or yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah. I, they they uh, are running around good. There's a good vibe. Guys uh, are not cocky, but they're very confident. It mm -hmm. looks like, and I think that's a credit to the coaching staff, not just Doug Peterson, but the assistant coaches. I think they've got a really good group. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, that bodes well going forward. What, what I like about Coach Campo, and, and, and I'll be honest, I hitch my wagon to him because he goes in and obviously with your experience, you've been around the league for a long, long time. People come up to you as much as maybe you go to say hello to them. And you've had conversations with Press Taylor, Heath Farwell, and now Phil Rauscher, uh, another one. And I know you know a number of other guys that are already on the staff yeah, as Mike, well. Mike McCoy, Doug. Mike McCoy came up yeah, and talked yeah. to me today. I, yeah. I, I, I'm happy that some of these younger guys know who I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they don't even have to Google you. They know who you are. But I think that it, it really does speak volumes to, A, what you've been able to do in the league, but then what the, the approachable or affable personalities of those coaches to where they they're not with blinders on and tunnel vision they're actually enjoying their job every single day absolutely and, and i think that you know both the shea townsend and uh rousher mm -hmm. have have said to me specifically and press taylor basically mm -hmm. hey coach if you see something please let me know if there's something that we could do better or or whatever that's nice. you know and i think that's yeah, I don't look at it as much as I know something that they don't know. Mm -hmm. I look like at it more that they are always willing to look at something and, and right. go forward with what they're doing. And I think I don't think you ever stop learning until you're done. And I think that's that's as good. As, <clears throat> excuse me. As much self scouting. As anything, you do not want to get full of yourself. You do right. not want to reach a point where you think you've got it all figured out. And I, and I, you know, I use that phrase a bunch during the regular season. I think Doug Peterson and his staff are as good as self scouting themselves as anybody out there. Yeah, I think you see it uh, from game to game on things that, you know, they do something a little bit different mm -hmm. based on what they feel was the weakness. Mm -hmm. And I think it shows up in the draft as well. You know, you, you, you know, uh, Areas that you need help. Bigsby, mm -hmm. for example, uh, is a pretty good inside runner. Mm -hmm. uh, they had trouble with short yardage and some inside run stuff. You know, let's let's get somebody that can do it. Yeah. And I think that's where they, they're forward thinking. And I think that comes from Doug Peterson. Yeah, I, I think there's a, a comfort level, of, of an appreciation for where he's at, what he's learned in the past, what he can bring to the table this time versus the last time. And we already saw a lot of that. But what about, let's just stay on Doug for just a second, because you just made me think of something. You know, he goes up to Philadelphia. He wins the Super Bowl, does it in the most unlikeliest of fashions. Statues are being built. Everything's great. And then, for whatever reason, it didn't all quite vibe and jive up there. And he leaves or he gets fired, however you want to look at this. What did he do? What did he think and maybe bring into this next job as saying, I'm going to do that a little differently? 
Well, I think I think the second time around of anything is what we're talking about. Some of these second year players are going to go through. Mm-hmm. You learn, you know, you learn from your mistakes. I, I really honestly didn't pursue it, mm-hmm. but I believe I would have been a heck of a lot better head second coach the second time. Uh, it, but, you know, he's he's one of those guys that's a forward thinker. He's a guy that, uh, you know, uh, has confidence in what he can do. But he also uh, has took, taken some time to reflect on what he did and mm-hmm. the things that he could do a little bit better. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I think that that shows up in how he how he approaches the team and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, the things that work the first time he's, that he's using right. and maybe some changes here. Well, and, and I also have a feeling, I have a feeling that the personnel around him is a little bit better this year, that you have another year under the belt of a Trevor Lawrence. You've got other emerging players and you have old Calvin Ridley that's come into town. Yeah, that's <laughs> and, and that's going to make things a lot, lot better. So I, how much will they try and introduce or reintroduce or whatever playbook wise at this stage of the offseason? Well, you know, I think we said at one of the other shows mm-hmm. uh, that that uh, Trevor's a different guy right mm-hmm. now than he yep. was a year ago. So the offense that they run, obviously, is going to be a little bit more through him. Mm-hmm. Not as much scheme, even though the scheme is going to be there. Their, their basic principles and their scheme is still going to be there. Right. But there's going to be a better understanding of the coaching staff of what the players can do. And those are the things that are going to be emphasized. Mm -hmm. On the reverse side of that, on the defensive side of the ball, I think that they have had an opportunity to look at the things that didn't go right. Right. And work on those things and, and find ways to better utilize their players to help that weakness you know, whatever it is. And, you know, I'm out there watching and, and I see some different things that different guys are doing mm-hmm. uh, that, are, that are directly addressing the pass rush, okay. for example. Right. And uh, that's without necessarily adding another player. It's okay. utilizing guys in spots where they give them more in those areas. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I'm talking about, that – that's what happens in the offseason. You mm-hmm. look at the cut-ups and you say, okay, we got to get better at this. How can we do it? Mm-hmm. We can't guarantee that we're going to get a great player to come in and make this better. Mm-hmm. What can our guys do to make it better? And that's partly how we put them in there and what they do. All right. So I'm not saying to you that you got to say to them that they already have their answer right now. I'm not even trying to back you into that corner. But... What you are saying is that, I think, is that you're going to reach a point, you're going to try everything with the personnel that you have, and you're going to coach them up, and you're going to say, hey, we're going to try some different things right now. Correct. And then what happens after that? Do they go back into their meeting room, let's just say after mandatory minicamp, and say we still don't have enough? Absolutely. Okay. And that's why these free agents that are sitting out there Mm -hmm. in some different areas, and Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about the Jaguars, I'm talking about everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, they're doing the same thing and they're looking and they're saying, look, uh, you know, we've got to firm this up somehow. Is there anybody out there that we can afford and that right. we can get in here that help us in those areas? That's why uh, I think uh, Trent Balky said this at one point. We're not through. Yeah, he said it. You know, and they just did it with the kicker. Mm-hmm. You That's know, true. so. So there's there's areas that they're going to look at and they're going to say, hey, look, we're doing everything we can to utilize the added experience of the guys we have in there, the mm-hmm. second-year guys, the third-year guys, mm-hmm. infuse that with some young guys that maybe can push in there and maybe get involved a, a, a little bit. Yeah. The offensive lineman, obviously, Antoine yeah. Harrison. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and now do we have to go and try to do something else to give us that edge that we need in, a, in an area. I'm going to stay on the defensive side, then we'll definitely hop over the offensive side in a little bit because I don't want to – I feel like I'm looking at it. I don't want to I don't want to throw darts just yet because I want to see what it looks like. But they're trying to bring back a Jordan Smith another time, trying to come back from injury. This will be his third year. We haven't seen him make a play. We haven't seen him in a game. And so you got him. I want you to touch on him, and then you see Trayvon Walker at the very least in some different situations right now. 
And then you mentioned young guy, Yasir Abdullah. Well, let's spend a minute on those, on those three guys. Okay, well, first of all, I, I'm really kind of interested to see what Jordan uh, does because, mm-hmm. you know, he was, he, athletically, he's very good. Mm-hmm. Now, he's coming off an injury. He's been banged up. Yeah. You know, he's not a real big guy. He's thin, but mm-hmm. he's athletic. Yeah. You know, and he's, and he's growing. He, he, this is third year here. Yeah, it's right. not like he's a rookie. He's a rookie experience-wise, right. but he's not in how he approaches the game. I'm interested in seeing what he and does. And they haven't given up on him. No, no, and I, I can see why. I mean, yeah. just watching him run around out there. Yeah. You know, he's a good athlete. He's quick. He's six seven. Yeah. I mean, you know, big, tall, mm-hmm. rangy, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, he's, they're going to take a really good look at him, I'm sure. And then you look at uh, Abdullah, mm-hmm. and Abdullah, I, you know, I haven't really, I, I, you don't see much out there, to be honest with you, other than he's a good athlete, mm-hmm. and he's pretty fast. And to me, uh, that's the kind of guy, he's a little undersized, but they need somebody to come off the edge, and they're going to utilize everything they can with him, and, and watching two films on him, he is athletic. Yeah. So, you know, you don't know what he can do. You're going you're gonna to find out mm-hmm. during the OTAs and, and the mini camps mm-hmm. and then into training camp. And uh, what was the third one? Well, we, if we go if we go Jordan Smith and then Yashir, Yasir, then go to Trayvon Walker yeah. in a different spot. Or, well, or he's not in a different spot, but ex- expand on what Well, at saw. the end of the year, you saw Trayvon Walker with his hand on the ground a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're continuing that. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I don't want to... You know, I think we get in trouble for saying Can't too much too about much. what what yeah. <laughs> Mia yeah. Mia O'Brien uh, got, already got in trouble. <laughs> got a little hand slap for <laughs> for saying a little bit too much about yeah. what's going on in practice. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, uh, it, it's not like this is something new. I believe he's going to be a better football player with his hand down. Mm-hmm. Now, where that position is, right? Whether it's inside, outside, whatever, right. I think you're going to see more hand down with him. Because it gives him that, you know, that little bit more mm-hmm. first step quickness that he's used to. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out a little bit more about what you're seeing because I want to be able to see it through a defensive coordinator and former head coach's eyes. I do think strength-wise, if he's at the training table and he's in the weight room, he can maintain his athleticism, get stronger, and he can beat guards yes, inside. Absolutely. Now, what about that outside? Well, see, again, it's going to come down to how much work he's getting and, and okay. you know, uh, improving his movement, mm-hmm. you know, within that. Mm-hmm. And some of it is first step quickness. Okay. You know, if he, if, Which he has. Uh, it looks like he yeah, has. Yeah. When his hand's on the ground, yeah. much faster. Yes. So, you know, that's why they're using a little bit more and experimenting mm-hmm. with it. And his best rushes this past year were not when he lined up inside, mm-hmm. but when they ran the stunts with Key right. mm-hmm. and him, with him coming up, Key attacking, and right. him coming up underneath and getting on the guards. Because mm-hmm. athletically and his strength-wise, yeah. the guards can't handle him, right. really. And, yeah. and so I think you're going to see either more of that or more alignments in there or whatever it takes on third down mm-hmm. to give him an opportunity to give him the best chance to rush the passer. All right, let's stay on the defensive side. Let's go to the back end. Uh, linebackers, I'm still trying to sort out and figure out. You might throw in a thought on Devin Lloyd, but uh, but let's go to the, the secondary. There's a lot of competition. I had my my flip card. I want to say there's in the neighborhood of 16, 16 defensive backs, Coach. Right. Uh, there's a ton of them that are all going to be trying to figure out what job they might have. And we're talking – the, the Greg Juniors, the Chris Claybrooks, the Monteric Browns of the world. We have, uh, look at that. Yeah, look at that. There's 18 of them. That's yeah. 18 defensive backs. <laughs> and so you've got a lot of them. That's the most I've seen. Yeah. And I, and it's I, a 90 man roster, and we know, but we're, yeah. we're still talking about what potentially could be 60, 65 to 66 spots, with depending the, on how many practice squad, practice right. squad guys they've got. But uh, th- that's more. First of all, the receivers and the DBs mm-hmm. are the ones you want the most of because they're the soft tissue I- injuries. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And right. so you want to make sure you, you're covered in a lot of ways. But I, I think with that many DBs, I think they're really searching a little bit mm-hmm. 
to try to find the best guys at different positions yeah. to give them a chance to to go because they didn't obviously did not address that position no until later in the draft and you know there's a lot of guys that right now if you start looking you're like okay I know he's not going to make this team that's fine we, I don't really have any problem with that but let me just give you an example and I don't know which guy I'm going to lock on but I, I might I might grab a guy Willie Taylor the third is a guy that is all the way behind Trayvon Walker and Kayla Von Chase on, if you can believe that. Uh, <laughs> and and they got uh, Deshaun, is it Deshaun Dixon, I think, is, is yeah. another guy that's there, number 47. Yeah. And then Willie is another guy that's trying to come off the edge. So you're looking at the numbers there when it comes to linebacker play. And then, like you just said, 18 defensive backs. You start rolling through some of these names, you're like, wait a minute, they don't have a chance to – Eric Hallett was a draft pick. They will look at him and see as much as they possibly can. Braswell was a draft pick, and they're going to have a chance to win playing time. There is one theme mm -hmm. that shows up all the way the foot, through the football team, in my opinion, speed. They are a faster football team. Mm -hmm. The guys that they took, right. whether they took them in the, in the first round mm -hmm. – or the sixth and seventh round, right? It's a fast bunch, mm -hmm. and to me, you can't coach that. No, either you can run or you can't. Yeah, that's that's very simple. And you, you know? want them edge to edge yeah. to cover every yeah. bit of that field with with as with as uh, wide open as the offenses are in the league, mm -hmm. and all the skilled people out there. You got to have guys that can run on the field and defensively. Uh, they are much faster right now than they were two years ago. I can mm -hmm. tell you that right now. Okay, and that I think is a big, big up for this for Trent Balky, right? For the scouting department, for the people who are signing either players that are coming out of college or signing guys uh, from other teams that are out there walking on the street. And so you have got to get to a point, increase competition, and become a faster, more physical team. Absolutely, and a, and a young team. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, the younger true. team you have. Mm -hmm. If they have experience, that's why I'm counting on guys like Walker mm -hmm. and Lloyd and Fortner and, you know, guys that are going to be second year guys, mm -hmm. uh, ETN, he's a third year guy, but he's really a second year guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys like that, you know, they're young and mm -hmm. they're athletic and they're now experienced. And that's how you build the football team right there. I'm trying to look at the sacks, you know, some of the areas that they really need to pick up. 35 sacks. Uh, when you take a look at their, you know, their interception average per game, they weren't picking off enough other, you know, like, look, Rayshon made some great plays yep. and a few other guys made some great plays at the yep. most pivotal time. Right. But you need more of them. Well, here's the thing to me that is going to be the key for us winning next year is what the defense does mm -hmm. on third down, period. Get them off the field. Period. Because our offense, I think I heard, mm -hmm. averaged 20. Yeah, right at 21. 21. Uh, offense average close to, uh, uh, was it 23, close to 24. 23 yeah, plus. 23, 23 yeah. plus. Yeah. This team is capable of scoring 30 mm -hmm. every time if they have enough opportunities. Yeah. And that's where the defense... The defense does not have to be the number one, two, three, four ranked defense in the no. league, but it does have to be optim. Uh, they have to get the ball for the offense, mm -hmm. whether it's by turnovers or getting them off the field on third down and giving them more opportunities. And the way I was looking at it earlier, coach, is that you, you're you're talking about a team. Let's just go round numbers here. Uh, the, the offense is around that top twelve. Okay, they're 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 good. So they're averaging close to 24 points, and right. they're averaging giving up close to 21 points. Right. So we're talking about a field goal game. That's what it is. But the point I made earlier, and you know I'm going to beat this drum, they will see 10 games with inexperienced or sub – I'm going to call it – all right, let me, let me, let me rephrase this. Permission to rephrase. Um, out of those 10 games against the AFC South and the NFC, NFC South, South. You will see an experienced but kind of a question mark guy in Derek Carr. You will see a lesser experienced but a former overall number one and still a question mark guy in Baker Mayfield. Both of those guys have been in the league a minute. Derek Carr's been in here a little, been in the league a little bit longer. Question mark, question mark. Then you will go Bryce Young, Desmond Ritter. You will go Anthony Richardson, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, 
question marks sure. everywhere. Absolutely. That's 10 games. If this team gives up around 21 points and some change, like, like, like they did average last year, they're in trouble. They better cut that by a field goal. Yeah. At a minimum. Yeah, I think so. I think that they have an excellent opportunity to do that, but they have to do it on the field. They can't, it's not about what you see on paper. Oh, I know. It's what they do on field. And I just think that, that, uh, uh, you know, I think those stats that you just threw out are interesting Mm -hmm. from the 24 to Mm -hmm. 21. Yes. That's a nine and eight football team. Mm hmm. That's what they were. Exactly. Exactly. So, And so, they had to come back to get to that. Night. That's right. Yeah. So there has to be improvement. To me, I think the offense is going to be better. The defense has to be better mm-hmm. as well. And mm-hmm. I think that's why, you know, you, you look at the, the group that they've got out there, uh, it, a lot is going to come down to what they do in the pass rush and mm-hmm. cover. And, and we'll see where that goes. All right, so let's hop over to the offense before we wrap up our uh, Campo and Joe podcast. And and Calvin Ridley, at least start there. This is the second time you've been able to see him. Now, in this OTA, Doug Peterson said before the practice started, you were at the press conference, It's he said, we, we, got, we just got to slow him down because right. he's super excited. That's a good problem to have. It is, and that's the kind of guys you want. And uh, I can see that. The guy hasn't played in a year and a half. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's excited. He wants to do everything. But, uh, you know, you, this is not the time to, to overtax yourself. Mm-hmm. It's that you get familiar with everything and that you, you uh, continue to work in the strength training, mm-hmm. in, the, in the fundamentals, those kind of things. It's not about that you have to be in there on every snap. You just have to work efficiently. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, the game is won now. Not in the games. True. The game is one now. The work you're putting in right now. What they're doing right now. But there are some guys you have to say, okay, let's just just back it off just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some guys that you got to go, hey, let's let's go. A little more, please. Yeah, let's pick it up here a little bit, you know. But uh, I think he's one that will have himself ready. Yeah. And and I think that uh, the injury to the foot, the length of time, I believe it'll be 22 months removed from the game when he does right. come back. Uh, but Trevor's going to, I'm thinking, like like you said, he's probably texting or calling Trevor like, let's go do more work. Let's yeah. go do more work. Right. And, and I totally get it. And that's what you want from a guy right. uh, that, that's going to give you everything he's got. Right. But it has to be measured and very, very, uh, uh, very much a process during the offseason. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm glad we have him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from oh, what yes. I've seen out there. Now, uh, throw a wild card at you here. DeAndre Hopkins, I don't blame anybody for being interested in DeAndre Hopkins coming in, in, to Duval. I would love it. We're talking about, you know, the attitude that we just mentioned about Calvin Ridley. DeAndre Hopkins is a baller. Right. He is a guy that I don't call him 50-50 balls that he goes, he makes them 70-30. He wins more battles against defensive backs. But a little bit of an injury history, a little bit up in age, and a little expensive. Would you go and make a play for him? I think it depends on on you know the things that you just talked about. Mm-hmm. You know, is he is he affordable? Is he gonna uh, you know be somebody that we can uh, integrate in? Is he a good locker room guy? Right. All those kind of things. Because I learned a valuable lesson. You know this story mm-hmm. already mm-hmm. with Deion Sanders. Yeah, but tell had it. a chance to get him. Didn't know much about him. All I saw was the flash and dash. We don't take him. He goes to San Francisco. They beat us in the NFC Championship game. I go to Jerry Jones and said, look, if we could get him, get him here. <laughs> you know, worried a lot about what was happening in my room, in yeah. the DB room. Well, I, I understand. All that. those things yeah. are there. And, and if you feel good about those things, right. then you want to improve the football team. Mm-hmm. If, it, if it means getting a guy that, that if he's a baller and he's, right. a, he's a good person and he helps your football team. Get him. You got to get better. Every everything you do has got to be better for the football team. Yeah. And the only thing I was going to say is that he was suspended for performance enhancing drugs, and it may have been through necessity in his mind that he needed to come back from a hamstring. I don't know. I'm not even going to make excuses for him. I'm just right. saying it's possible. But if you look at that wide receiver room now, we know th- most Jaguar fans are 
hoping to the heavens that Calvin Ridley is as advertised. Zay Jones was a 70-plus catch guy last year. Right. Chris, Christian Kirk, we know how, how good he was last year. But to your point, there's still room in that room. You know, the interesting thing is, as, as, as us being here in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. obviously we're fans. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We see the room that was really improved. Mm -hmm. A year ago, we were knocking Guys that were coming yeah, in here. True. Okay. I just read somewhere where the receiver cores were graded mm -hmm. in the league. Yeah. Now, I take that with a grain of salt because of some of these yeah. guys don't know what they're talking about. Right. But the the Jaguars were 18th yeah. in the receiver you can, you room. You can upgrade that room. So can it be upgraded? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can it, it can be upgraded. Yeah. But again, there's other things involved. It's, no, it's just not... Uh, Gosh, uh, mm -hmm. I'm getting old. I forget mm -hmm. some guys, but mm -hmm. uh, the guy that was with San Francisco and the Cowboys, yeah. and they still trying to come back in the XFL. He's uh, oh, the fine. receiver. Oh, uh, uh, that was trying to make the comeback. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, well, he's on TV T all the time. Dio and Dio, yeah, Dio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't fit here. Yeah, right. Because he's not the right guy. Yeah. Okay, I get. That's you. what has to. You know, you you want to improve. That's why I was worried about Dion. Mm -hmm. Dion ended up being the best team guy we had on the football right. team because yeah. all he cared about was winning. Yeah, and all he ever did was, "It's not your fault; it's my fault." I love. We're that. out there playing. I love and, that, and that's kind of what we have here right yeah. now. And and, and I, the way you just described that, it does make me think of it. You know, if you have a guy that's got a lot of pride, a lot of ego. He never wants to look bad, which means he's going to put everything into it to make sure he doesn't look bad. That's exactly right, and that's a that's a fair point. That's so fair to point. me, it's it's uh, if it's the right thing, mm -hmm. and I think that's partly how this team is going to go to where it needs to get. Right. Trent Baalke has to be on top of things. Doug mm -hmm. Peterson has to be mm -hmm. on top of things. Shad Khan has got to be on sure. top of things. Everybody's got to be together as a team here in order for it to to go yeah. forward. Yeah, you can manage that. 100 percent all right last thing we do are you okay with mcmanus being brought in I, I know you had the conversation and i i don't have a problem with it at all i, I think the kickers i hate to say this they're, they're a little bit of a come and go world a little bit of a nomadic society one day you're up next day you're down you're packing you're unpacking whatever riley patterson was good but not great right and kickoffs were a concern so now you got to see mcmanus Today, what'd you think? Are you good uh, with it? Yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah. Uh, this guy's been around for a long time. His skill set has not diminished. Mm -hmm. They had him kick a lot of balls that really were unkickable. Well, that he missed. I, yeah. That he missed and yeah. he didn't get. They were unkickable. Yeah. They should not have been kicked. You and I gave the, the example on primetime last week. The first game with Nate Hackett and Russell Wilson, game comes down to the end. And instead of putting Russell in a situation to make a play, they trot him out for what was it? A 67 62, or 60, whatever, whatever it was. was. Yeah. I mean, come on. And and really, to be honest with you, uh, you know, obviously I know the coaching staff a little yeah. bit, some mm -hmm. of the guys, and I've visited with some of the coaches. Mm -hmm. And the guy has not diminished in skills okay. and he's experienced. And you're talking about somewhere between a five and eight yard dis difference. Mm -hmm. In where you either have to go for fourth down, that's good, or you take the points. Now, if you and say it, five to eight yards, that's massive. And this league, you need if you're going to score thirty points, you're not going to score all touchdowns. Right, it doesn't happen. Right, there's going to be field goals in there. Yeah. and the, and this guy definitely has a stronger leg. Just watching him yeah. today, and and it's effortless. Yeah, and you know, he's kicking it over fifty without, which was without, nice. Yeah. yeah, and and the key to me. How quick the ball gets up in the air. Okay. That means the, you can't block it. The deeper out you go, mm -hmm. the, the harder that is. Right. And he's getting it up in the air and and it's going. Yeah, so. which is good. And it was, uh, you know, nose over toe. It looked yep. good. Yep. The other thing I was going to say is when Doug, I love the fact that Doug was aggressive, that he right. would go for it on fourth down. But make no mistake, some of the lack of confidence in a kicker would make you go for it on fourth. Absolutely, down. that's what it was. Yeah. He, he, that's your five days. At the end, at about. the end, they weren't even trotting him out there. Yeah, past 50, 51, yeah. That was about the max. Yeah. Uh, well, his kick move. is all over the league, kicking him fifty-five now. Right, right. You know that's fifty-five, fifty-six, mm -hmm. fifty-seven. I'm not talking about sixty-seven. I'm right. talking about fifty. 
50 plus, which is kind of a crapshoot, but the yeah. guys with the legs are doing it now. And that 50 yarder that I saw today was about halfway up the upright. That's what I'm saying. He's got <laughs> effortless. Right. It's effortless. Yeah. It's uh, DeChambeau. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Bryson <laughs> with the power. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. All right. Listen, good stuff. As always, coach, totally appreciate it. Campo yep. and Joe, we'll have another practice next week that we'll be able to look at. We'll be back with you. Appreciate everybody tuning in, Facebook Live, or wherever you find us. Uh, Campo and Joe, we'll talk to you next week.